Hi, y'all. Let's chat a little bit about impeaching the president, as the Democrats seem hell-bent on doing, no matter what it's going to do to them in the attempt to do it. Uh, a few months ago, I made a video talking about how the bit on the Mueller front had a, uh, well, that investigation died, that attempt, uh, that impeachment attempt itself died, and I thought that, like, maybe the Democrats would start to wise up that, uh, they should stop buying their own PR. Apparently that was wrong. So then the, uh, the whistleblower came forth, and uh, his story wasn't all that it, it should have been. I've talked about that in the video last month. I guess it was last month. Uh, this lieutenant colonel the other day came forward, and he said that he does not, that his view was, listening to the call, he did not think that a president should do that. That doesn't make him a whistleblower. It doesn't tell us anything except his opinion. He doesn't think the president should do that. Uh, when you become the president, then you can make the decision about the things that you think are appropriate for the president to do and not to do, but you aren't. You're a staff member. Nothing, uh, there's not anything in that, that transcript that I heard that violates any statute. And on, <clears throat> on the proposition about pressuring foreign, gov uh, foreign governments about conducting investigations, now, of course, they want to add in the, uh, the bit about a political rival. Uh, Biden and this president are not political rivals at the moment. They're, they belong to two different political parties. Biden is a political rival of other Democrats at the moment because he's not actually running for president. He's running to see if he can run to be president, which is a different matter. And uh, it would not matter, uh, for example, if he were a candidate for president, as it should be obvious, if he had, I don't know, abducted, raped, and murdered someone, you wouldn't say, oh, well, because he's a candidate for president, we just, you know, hands off, we'll just figure that out later. The Democrat Party, of course, would not support that position. Their investigation of the current president for <clears throat> various things should be an indication that they don't accept the logic that because you become a political candidate, therefore all questions about your uh, criminal actions thereby become obviated. Uh, nobody accepts that. It's just political fodder at the moment to say, uh, to try to damage the president and say, oh, well, it's improper to inquire about Joe Biden's past crimes or potential crimes. Uh, so they have to cast it as it's improper to inquire into, to turn another government loose on a political rival, which is not what is happening. It's his son, and if there is a crime there, the fact that <laughs> the person happened, the person's father happens to become a political candidate, doesn't stop it from becoming, uh, st does not stop it from being a crime. And on this notion that it's improper for us to do this with other governments, it cannot possibly be the case, because we have treaties with these other governments ratified by the Senate that say we can do this. <clears throat> we even have such treaties on cooperative investigations with the Russians on a host of issues, and the issue there is because, look, there are certain things that, you know, it's in all of our interests to kind of want to get behind, get under, and to eradicate wherever we find them to the extent that we can, and uh, so even countries that we're not particularly friendly with, we still engage in treaties uh, with them in order to address certain kinds of criminal activities that affect both of our peoples. <clears throat> it happens. So the law of the land is quite clear that it is perfectly proper for the president to inquire of other governments about the criminal activities of American citizens in that other country because we have treaties that say it is proper to do. And last I read the Constitution, it says that the Constitution of the United States and the treaties of the United States are the supreme law of the land of the United States. Ta-da! So anyway, there's that. But on the, uh, the actual impeachment of the, whatever the issue is, of the moment, um, it's, if you're an American, it's going to feel a little bit like, uh, well, I guess if you're anywhere, it's going to feel like a partisan uh, divide issue. Uh, it, it's very polarizing, and, and we're told that this is a very polarizing time, the United States. It's polarizing in every election cycle. That's the nature of politics. Politics is what divides people. Common identity is what helps them reunite afterwards. Uh, so it should not be surprising that... Uh, when it is not obvious that the president has violated a statute, uh, has done anything improper, let alone violated a statute, it should not be unsurprising that the party with which that president is aligned is not going to be in favor of seeing that president impeached. And that the party that hates that president usually is not in favor of it, but occasionally you get, uh, you get congresses that go off the rail, like the one that went after Bill Clinton, even though he had uh, at least, a, um, there was evidence sufficient to show that he had committed a crime. Uh, but I think those kinds of crimes shouldn't be crimes. I don't think it should be a crime to lie about get, getting a blowjob. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, that's between a man and his wife or a woman and her husband or whatever other combination you want to have there. Uh, they, these are not public offenses. These are, are private wrongs and they should be handled 
between the parties. Uh, so the whole Bill Clinton impeachment thing I wasn't in favor of. And I'm not in favor of this one. Uh, I don't think this president has violated the law. I don't even think he's done anything wrong. I think he's done a lot of things that are not uh, that are not fashionable within the way the system works now, which is what that lieutenant colonel was complaining about. You know, they talk about the norms that have been violated. The norms that have been violated are precisely why people wanted this president in there. Uh, they're tired of these norms. You know, the, the Hunter Biden thing where he gets paid many tens of thousands of dollars a month for his expertise and absolutely nothing. It's precisely because wherever his father seems to have political interests, uh, Hunter Biden gets a job. And uh, the president is suddenly in favor of helping that country out when his son is getting lots and lots of money. Who knew? So uh, people are just, they're just tired of the, the so-called swamp or business as usual or whatever you would like to, to call the, uh, the, the abortion that is the Washington uh, clique, we'll call it, instead of the cartel like Ted Cruz calls it. But in any event, this president was put there to disrupt that. And then now, now the, the denizens of that swamp are complaining that he's actually disrupting. Their, he's making it difficult for them to do business as usual. That's why he's there. So uh, <clears throat> Nancy Pelosi, in, in whining about this president's reckless behavior and, and um, the Democrat Party more generally whining about this president's recklessness and upsetting the norms of the way things operate, now wants to upset the norms of the way things operate by impeaching him, which is slightly ironic, but whatever. Uh, if you look at ac across the sea and you look at like the Brexit thing, which is deeply polarizing the United Kingdom, even though it shouldn't be, a vote was had, uh, there was an outcome, but now we have this new phenomenon there, as we have here in the United States, where you have to get the consent and the, the continued cooperation of the losers because reasons. Uh, like Boris Johnson, when he said, I would rather be found dead in a ditch than send another letter, he should have said, after, after the parliament said, do it, he should have said, no. And the only way for you to, do, to stop me is to remove me from office, which triggers the general election, which I won't. I'm not sending your letter or anybody else's letter. I'm not asking for an extension. We are, by hook or by crook, being snatched out of this union because a referendum was sent to the people and the people were told, you're out, what you vote for in this election conclusively determines the issue. Now, of course, the moment that the establishment was shocked that the wrong uh, outcome happened, the establishment started talking about, well, you know, it's not legally binding. There's nothing in the, the Constitution there that that requires us to obey this in, in a parliament. And, of course, that's true. But you don't send people uh, say, hey, uh, this is like a doctor saying, you know, when he knows that he's got a, an order from a judge that would allow him to overrule your, your decision, say, all right, I want this to be your free decision to decide whether to have this surgery or not to have this surgery. So whatever you decide is what I'm going to go with. And then, you know, he's got his fingers crossed behind his back, and, and uh, he's like, <laughs> boy, if you choose wrong, it's going to be a big shock for you. Uh, you, you can't you can't do medicine that way, and you can't do politics that way. Uh, really, it, it, you just can't. Now, the losers in that case were sufficiently bright to say, well, of course we're going to honor the referendum by trying to work to undo it, and now you can see what's going on there. This, uh, this impeachment proceeding is because a, a radical outsider, which is incidentally funny to call a billionaire from the New York area a radical outsider, I should say, a, a nonconformist observer has come into the situation and is shaking things up, and the losers of the election refuse to accept that they have lost. Hillary Clinton's done a great tour uh, for this really terrible book of hers to talk about how it's every... The, uh, the only thing that wasn't a problem in the election was her. She was practically perfect in every way. She was the Mary Poppins. I hear one of my cats doing something, sorry. Uh, and, and it was all the other things. It was the Russians, it was the Ukrainians, it was the this, it was the that. It wasn't that she ignored the Midwest. No, 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 that had nothing to do with it. It wasn't going around insulting people whose votes you needed. No, 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 it wasn't that. It was everything else. It, it's, it's always something else. Anyway, they just cannot accept that they lost. And then, of course, they will say, and as here, as in the UK, well, there were lies told during the election. Of course! That's politics. You know, people want to put their spin on it. And it is unfortunate, but it is inevitable that when one side lies, the other side is going to ratchet up its rhetoric, which is not always going to be honest in response. And it's the job of the people to say, notwithstanding the lies, where do I think the best, the best of the argument 
lies, where the best of the argument remains, and then to vote for that. But of course, it's a temptation to always want to say that the other side voted to ratify the worst possible, uh, the most despicable lie that anyone on the other side told, or to uh, put their imprimatur on the worst personality traits of the least acceptable person on the other side of the argument. This is a Saul Alinsky kind of thing, where he said, well, actually, I can do one better than just saying that, that it's, it's this kind of, it's this, uh, it's not simply just doing that, saying you're going to show up and protest the worst attributes of the other side. He said, no, it's far better because you know what's going to happen is that uh, this group is going to say, look at the worst attributes of that side. The worst possible attribute we can find there is the general attribute of that, that, that side. He said, so don't show up and protest their racists. Become their racists. Dress up like Klansmen and support them. Because then the other side will do all the work for you. <laughs> the agent provocateur kind of mentality. Uh, you got a lot of that that goes on. It is just part and parcel of politics. This is not anything new. It goes back to the founding. It goes back all through history when you've had democracies that you get people say all kinds of terrible things about other people. It's just the nature of the process. But nevertheless, after that is over, you've got to get shit done. You've got to do the governing bit. This party, this minority party, the Democrats, want to say, no, 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 we don't accept it. And we're going to do everything that we can, no matter how self-destructed, no matter how self-destructive it is, to undo this election. And they are rapidly shooting themselves in the foot. And the uh, the Trump phenomenon is it's often been said that the the is like the second shoe to drop in something that started in England, started in the UK, I should say, with respect to Brexit. Like that came first, then Trump. I think there's some merit to that. It's like this general sense that that is just wafting over the the pond. They, Democrats here would be wise to look at what's happening to the minority parties there. They're not the ones who are unifying to get this done. They're the ones who are busy tearing themselves apart. Look at Labor and the Liberal Democrats, uh, Ply Camry, uh, SNP. I mean, you just look right across, and you're getting a lot of dissension in the ranks about how, about the one true perfect way to take down the other side. And you look at, uh, like, the Brexit Party and the Conservatives, and they're working on an alliance at the moment, which, if that comes into fruition, is going to cash out these other parties. I just say this to the Democrats. Think very carefully. Do not let Adam Schiff uh, walk you off this cliff. He will be the first lemming. Uh, let, him walk, <laughs> let him walk alone. Do not follow him over that cliff, because it will not be good for you. And it won't be good for the country, by the way. It is not good when one country has, I'm sorry, when one party in a country has too much power. It needs a viable opposition. The task of the viable opposition is to know when to let, when not to interrupt the, the uh, majority party from you know, screwing up and saying, okay, uh, go right ahead, never interrupt your enemy when he's making, making a mistake, and when to step up and really uh, pull out all the stops to stop something that's truly horrible. The problem with the Trump thing is they think everything the man does is truly horrible. He could stop a rape in progress, and they would turn that into an argument saying he does not trust women to look after their own affairs. It was impertinent of the president to intervene to stop this rape on the belief that the woman was unable to prevent her own rape. Uh, he could, I, LBJ said it best, you know, I could walk, I could walk on water today, and the headlines would read, President can't swim. It, no matter what you do, the job of the media is to tear you down. You've, if you're going to be a politician, you've got to get past that. That's just what it is. And you've got to focus, keep your eye on the ball. And in this case, the only... Well, this analogy is going to go right up somebody's ass, especially because this is Trump. <laughs> uh, I don't want you to keep your eye on, on his balls uh, or Nancy Pelosi's balls, but on like what the people are elected to get there to do. And uh, contrary to popular belief, you're not elected to just impeach this president. And the fact that you have gotten virtually nothing else done since you've been elected, other than talk about impeaching this president, should indicate to you how useless and ineffectual you are as a party. Yes, you can impeach the president. No, it's not going to result in anything. And it has cost you the whole of your legislative agenda. And if that's not self-defeating, I don't know what is. And I think the Democrat voters should be pissed. They sent you to Washington to get stuff done, and you've not. You have failed on every, virtually every agenda item that you went to Washington with, you have failed on. And you will also, by the way, fail on this one, so... Uh, you are virtually useless. Dunsel would be a good way to describe you if we were in Star Trek. Have a great day.